Okay, so we're looking at 4.2 quadratic relations. We're looking at a review right now. This review, okay, is just a review of a particular graph, just a random graph given to you. What are the different parts of a parabola that we learned? Well, we learned about the following. So we're going to ask, the, I'm going to ask you to fill in the table of certain things. For example, I'm going to ask you to fill in what the vertex is on this particular graph. Where is the vertex? The vertex is at, let's look, here we go, no, no, that's right, right here. The vertex is located here. The vertex has the coordinates 8, 1. And that's what we're looking at here. So 8, 1. The next one we're going to look at is the optimal value. Now, if you remember yesterday, or the last section, I talked about where the optimal value occurs. Optimal looks a lot, or optimum, looks a lot like, or sounds a lot like, maximum or minimum. And that is true. That is exactly what an optimal value is. What is the optimum value? Is it a max or is it a min? Hopefully you're thinking, okay, it opens down, so it must be a max. So max means the highest. What is the highest point that this graph reaches? Well, it's a 1. So it's a maximum of 1. It reaches a highest value of 1. The next thing you'll be asked is well, the y-intercept. Where is the y-intercept? Okay, the y-intercept is located right here. This is the y-intercept. This is where it is. The y-intercept crosses the y-axis. Where does the graph cross the y-axis? And it crosses it here at this value, which is 0, negative 3. We write that as coordinates. It's the best way to give me the answer. Next part. What is the x-intercept? Maybe there's one. Maybe there's two. Maybe there's none. The goal is, is to find the x-intercept. Our x-intercept is here and again here. What are those values? Well, this value is 4. This value is 12. The coordinates are 4 and 12. 4, 0 and 12, 0. We write it out as coordinates. Not 4, 12 because that's separate. 4, 0 is this coordinate and 12, 0 is our second coordinate. All right, let's keep moving. Our AOS, which stands for our axis of symmetry, where is it located? Well, you should be imagining that there is a dotted line that crosses through the vertex. That dotted line is a vertical dotted line, and that is known as the axis of symmetry. What is the axis of symmetry? Well, it's an equation, folks. An equation is x equals 8. That's moving forwards. The next part, our opening. How does this graph open? Look at the arrows. Look at the way the arrows are pointing. The arrows are pointing down. So that is the opening and it opens down. Moving on, let's look at all the different letters. We need to understand the letters that were represented in the equations that we looked at in the previous video. There were a bunch of different letters that I stated had significant uh, impact on the actual graph. What is R? What is S? What is H? What is K? What is C? What is A? We need to know either the values or whether they're um, positive or negative if they play an important piece. So let's look at the last one, A. This graph opens, as you can see, down. Here is a down arrow, here is a down arrow, that's directly related to the A. What can you tell me about the A value? Hopefully you're thinking A must be less than zero. Good. Next, C. Does anyone remember what the C stood for? Well, 
If you go back to the notes, you'll notice that C stands for the y-intercept. What is the y-value of the y-intercept? That is negative 3. K. What did K stand for? Well, K was part of the vertex. It is the maximum or minimum value. In this case, it's a maximum. That's the y value of the vertex, and that number is 1. H. H stood for the x value of the vertex. It also stood for where the axis of symmetry is. So H has the value, let's see, the x value, which is 8. S. What does S stand for? What does R stand for? Both of these stand for the x and y, and, uh, sorry, just the x-intercepts, the roots. The roots are 4 and 12, and those tend to be our roots. So folks, now what we've done is filled in a chart about a specific parabola and be able to identify the different parts. Let's move in, moving forwards. Finite differences is basically the difference between consecutive y values with evenly spaced x values. What does that mean? Well, the best way to do that is we're going to look at examples. First of all, the first difference is determines if the relation is linear, i.e., if the first differences are constant, then we can say that the relation is linear. Second differences determines if the relation is quadratic. How do we do that? Well, if second differences are constant, then the relation is quadratic. Now, noting all of this, it's important for you to understand that these are definitions. The best way to really look at this is through examples. So an example, use finite differences to determine the relation if the relation is linear, quadratic, or neither. So you're given a bunch of coordinates. So let's look over here. Here they are. These are all the different coordinates and note that they are not in order. So what you need to do is put these points in order from, low, from left to right. What point comes left first and then moving towards the right? So, which one is to the left more? Well, that answer is this one here. Negative 3, 5 is the first one. Next one is negative 2, 7. Next one after that is negative 1, 9. Next one after that is 0, 11. And then finally, 1, 13. So we're going to do it from left to right. We have to do that in a t-table where x is on one side, y is on the other. So a standard way of making a table of values, and we need to compare. How do we do this? The first thing we do is compare delta x. Delta x means the change. How are these x's changing? We need to check this out before we can find the y values. So we must check that the x's go in a specific order. And do they? Well, they all move plus 1 to get to the next number, and so on all the way down. Once we've discovered that they're the same, you can now, this word same allows you, gives you permission to start now doing delta y. Delta x must be the same before you move forward. If it is not, you have to write unable to determine. There is a way to determine it, but you don't know how. So you have to write unable to determine. So now we're moving to delta y. Let's see how the y values change. 5 to 7 moves up 2. 7 to 9 moves up 2. 9 to 11. 9 plus 2 gives me 11. 11 plus 2 gives me 13. If you're not sure how to do this, take the next number and subtract the previous number and that will give you these values. Don't forget the sign to say whether the numbers moved up or they moved down. So in our case, the numbers moved up and the delta y values are the same. So since, now note here what I have here. 
This means since. Since delta x and delta y are the same, we can make a conclusion, therefore, the table represents a linear relation. So that's important to note here, what is going on at this point. Now moving forwards, let's look at part b. This time part b gives you a table. And here are all the coordinates for our table in the second one. What's the first step? Hopefully you're thinking delta x. I need to compare how the numbers change. All the numbers move up 1, so we can say that the values are all the same on delta x. That gives us permission to do delta y. Now find the differences in the values. 2 to 3 moves plus 1. 3 to 6 moves plus 3. 6 to 11 moves plus 5. 11 to 18 moves plus 7. And 18 to 27 moves plus 9. So all the numbers moving up. Are these values the same? Hopefully you look at it and say, nope. Let's keep moving. Once you've done delta y, you go to delta delta y. And guess what, folks? All these numbers move up to plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. Therefore, what we've now done is we have found that the values move all the same in delta delta y. So delta y, it's the first delta, first change in y, second delta, second difference is delta delta y. These values are the same, so we can make a conclusion on this problem and say, therefore, since delta x, and delta delta y are the same, therefore the table represents a quadratic relation. Okay, so since delta x and delta delta y are the same, therefore the table represents a quadratic relation. So let's talk about some other possible answers you could have. Let's say delta x is not the same. So since delta x is not the same, we can write a therefore conclusion that says Therefore, unable to determine the relation. Now, the other option is if delta x is the same, but delta y and delta delta y have no pattern, therefore the table represents neither. And that's the case of neither. So you have two cases, the explanation, and you may have an example of that in your quiz or test. All right, moving forwards. Example number two. You've got a problem. A driver puts on a word problem, sorry. A driver puts on the brakes and skids through an intersection. The distance that the car skids depends on the speed of the car, just before the brakes are applied. You're asked to A, graph this situation and draw a line or curve of best fit. Part B, you're asked to use the curve to estimate the car's initial speed if the skid is 104 meters long. And finally, you're asked to use first and or second differences to classify this relation as linear or quadratic. So obviously this is the word part, folks. So take some time, pause the video, and record this in your notes. All right, we're going to move forwards now, after you've paused the video, to be able to do the rest of this question. You need some more information. Well, what you're given is a graph. What you're given is a table. And you're to graph this and do all that lovely stuff. And here's all the explanation on the page below. So you'll see this information. So this is all the question that was on the other page. But the nitty gritty. So the A, B, and C that I am asking you to finish. A, you're asked to graph it. So here is the graph of each of the points and you'll notice that you need to represent that with a curve of best fit. We extend the curve and we ask, answer the next question. Use the curve to estimate the car's initial speed if the skid is 104 meters long. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to draw a line going across. Now let's label this axis so you can understand that 104 is located up here. We go across 104, and then once we hit the graph, we look down, 
and that speed turns out to be 115 kilometers per hour. So if it's 115 kilometers per hour, you're roughly making a stopping distance of 104 meters long. Now, part C says use first and or second differences to classify the relation as linear or quadratic. So, again, how do we do that? Well, we need to do delta x, but note here, guys, x is not x here. It's the delta initial speed. So delta initial speed, and we find the differences in the values, and we find out that all the x values, okay, the initial speed values go up by 10. So that's the same. We move to the other side and determine the length of the skid. The delta of the length of the skid is as follows. 0 to 0 0.7 is 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7. 0 0.7 to 2.8 is plus 2.1. 2.8 to 6.4 is plus 3.6. Next is plus 5, plus 10.4. What? Sorry, plus 6.4, plus 7.9, plus 9.3. Plus 10.7, plus 12.1, and plus 13.6. So each value is going up. And just a reminder, this is actually plus 6.4. To go from here to here is plus 6.4. So all of these values move up. Are they the same? Nope. Sorry, folks, they're not. So we're going to continue on and do delta delta ls. And we're going to find the values, and we get these values here. So I want you to understand what this problem talks about. It is the stopping distance in comparison of exactly maybe 10 centimeters long, maximum. 10 centimeters on a car, to, the difference in that is negligible, meaning that it's, in terms of the problem we're trying to solve, you will notice that the pattern almost is exactly the same. Not quite exactly, but almost. Again, we're finding, drawing a curve of best fit, so we want to make sure there is some sort of relation, and there is. It clearly should be considered quadratic, even with the minor variances. And the reason why, folks, is do not forget that we're talking about a problem that involves a real-life situation, a car skid. Your variables, your values may be just slightly off, but again, there's a discernible pattern that you can use to determine that this relation is definitely quadratic. Okay, so delta ls is very close to being exactly the same. So we can say this relation represents a quadratic relation. All right, that's the end of the video, folks. Have a great night, numerical night. Take care.